So uh, thanks for the invitation. Um, <clears throat> I try to lay out the story about Nanit. Um, this this uh, talk is about the story of Nanit, understanding how the product came into life, and we're in the new age of IoT devices that generate huge amount of data. So how we take this data and create uh, insights that matter with, uh, with it, and the aspiration also into health. Um, so let's start by who am I? So i am uh, in the last 15 years, been working on how to make camera smart. Uh, I made my PhD in machine learning, computer vision, a postdoc here at Cornell University, and, and uh, work a couple of years at Applied Materials, building like computer vision platforms in the semiconductors industry. Uh, but five years ago, I became a dad. Uh, it was an inspiring moment. Uh, like all parents, I wanted to know more about my kid. And I'm a camera guy, so I put, took a camera, I just put it above my crib in a bird eye view. Uh, the idea is to have a simplified environment when I can uh, actually apply algorithm to learn about my kid's development, and uh, collect the data, sleep. Uh, it started as a nice experiment for me uh, with a server at home. But over time, I saw that it really helped me as a parent to make better decisions. Um, I started to concentrate around sleep. Sleep is a key measure in child development, in uh, brain development. And it's really um, um, uh, parents are sleep deprived. Every day they are struggling with putting their baby to sleep. Uh, I was sleep deprived. And um, uh, when I was about to finish my PhD, I moved as a postdoc to Cornell University here in the city, and I joined a program that is called the Jacobs Institute. Um, the idea is to use uh, computer vision technology uh, with the intersection of uh, child development and sleep science, and it's strongly related to uh, science. So um, uh, the transition to uh, Jacobs was pretty, pretty um, uh, natural for me. I don't know how, do you know how much do you know about this program. It is a program here in New York. The idea is to commercialize science, and there is a really nice agreement uh, around the IP uh, that uh, give uh, life, actually, uh, to this concept to build a company. Um, and it's really helped me to create the network of uh, top experts around sleep, child development, psychologists, and so on. So let, let me tell you a few words about Nanit. First, you can go online and buy Nanit today. Uh, we started to ship the product uh, at the end of uh, last year, 2016, December 2016. Uh, the product is on the market. Uh, it is a camera that is, uh, you put behind the crib, it's blended into the wall. Uh, we designed it to be HIPAA compliant. Uh, it meets all the standards. Uh, uh, by the way, crib is the most restricted with most regulation piece of furniture in your, uh, at your home. So we overcome all those challenges. And um, parents just uh, install the camera, put it there, and from this moment, um, everything that you see is magic. So let me show you uh, just the product because it is not a simple uh, baby monitor. I want you to understand the concept. Um, so what you see here is um, my kid, uh, Elad, okay? so. Uh, First, you open the app and you see a welcome message based on our algorithm that tell, help you with real-time decision, uh, managing nap time, check from remote, and so on, check for the nanny. Um, this is just the first thing that, you, that happened to you when you open the app. You have the best view, like better than every other security camera that you can think out there, uh, with temperature and humidity and everything that you expect from a baby monitor. Every morning, we give the parents a morning brief. What happened with your kids during the day? Parents are watching those video summaries of av on average at least once a day. Uh, when we give them uh, the stats around sleep quality, total sleep time, number of visits, we differentiate between different kinds of visits, whether you took the baby, interact, or just look at your baby. Uh, sleep onset is the time that took your baby to fall asleep, and everything is aligned with uh, sleep summary. So what you can see here is uh, um, um, our algorithm, we are the first camera on the market that measure behaviors. Uh, what you see here is not just movement detection. We measure sleep better than the state-of-the-art medical device, just to tell you um, uh, kind of uh, 
um, uh, the precisions that we approach. We classify um, uh, objects better than the human eye. Uh, for instance, even tell you if there is a baby in the crib um, using our uh, 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 deep network technologies. Um, and uh, on top of it, we have something that uh, we call it the activity feed. We believe that the parents are, um, uh, there is the baby team, the dad, the mom, uh, nanny, and so on. So we want them all to be engaged and in a locked space so they could be aligned on best practices. Uh, so here, a lad woke up and was attended, and you can also comment. So in this case, he woke up because he didn't find the pacifier, and my wife told me, darling, next time, please place all the pacifier at the same corner. So this is just a small example, um, something that really happened in life. Uh, we also look at data patterns and give you tips or recommendation. I will add a few words about it later. So now that you understand the product, I will tell you a few words about the technology. And um, it's related to, our, uh, to the next stage to talk about the data and how you can use it. Uh, getting data, collecting data, it's something that uh, uh, many companies does do. How to use this data in an efficient way, uh, this is more complex. And we bet on the video because we believe that the information is in the video. Uh, but the problem with uh, computer vision challenges that as much as the information there is very, uh, most of the information exists in the image, it is really hard to analyze the image. Because if I put a camera here, there is like reflection and many people and uh, outdoor, indoor, and I need to add a lot of knowledge into the, um, uh, into the uh, computer to make it smart. Um, on the other end, when you know the boundaries of computer vision problems today, you can set the challenge in a way that you break the problem into sub-problem. Um, when you put a camera in a bird eye view, you simplify the environment. You have one object uh, that you are checking after. Most matrices are on the same size. You know when the pairs is approaching for. You have clean data, and you can solve a human analysis problem in a better precision and faster and a cheaper way than any other camera exists today on the market. And this is uh, understanding where, where is the cutting edge technology today and building the hardware together with the software from inception in a way that will always be there will bring you to the uh, best results. So we create data. We create data around human analytics, but the usage, um, pattern usage in the data are pretty extreme. Parents are using our product on average 80 minutes a day. I can tell you that the numbers are even higher. It is uh, more than Facebook, Snapchat, Messenger together. Uh, DAU, MAU is also pretty high. 59% is including also, um, let's talk about the usage split. So we have dad, mom, uh, but around close to 20% of our users are mostly uh, grandparents that are sneaking from remote. Uh, so if we take everyone together, the DAU have MAU, it is 59%. And mom is 75%. Uh, so the numbers are pretty high. Parents are addicted, addictive to, to Nanit. Uh, they love the product. And something that is very interesting, they love the camera but they interact only with the app. Uh, and it's also uh, uh, nice to see. So there are many things that happen in many directions that we are going. One of them is to develop, uh, uh, develop uh, first what we call development milestones. The first time the baby roll over. This is an example that one of our uh, users allow us to share when she detected her baby um, flip around for the first time. Uh, in the next uh, month, we are going to launch this feature when we are going to detect those development milestones and more. There are also really fun events. Um, I'm from Israel originally. I was there. Uh, we have a team in Israel. All the software guys uh, are there. Um, and when I was there, my kid was escaping from the crib for the first time. So it's like a video that was running in the family, and it just... Um, uh, bring joy into parenting in those two free first year of life. And I'm fortunate to have it with my three boys. Uh, so it is great. Um, and other fun events that are, you know, on our Facebook uh, page. Uh, this is uh, his birthday. So it was a birthday morning surprise. Uh, a lot of fun um, that we also captured. 
There is also the opportunity, like we can draw the silhouette of the baby. So we can uh, think about ways to integrate some content on top of it. It was a project that we called it the potential in every child, um, as you can see. So our, our business is uh, human analytics. So we develop uh, those capabilities. Currently, we analyze sleep and parent interaction. But uh, tips and recommendation, I'll give you a teaser. It is a feature that we are going to launch in the next uh, month or so. Uh, capture first is something uh, that I talked about. Uh, tracking breathing. Uh, for some reason, this is the easiest problem to solve, as much as it is. Uh, uh, but you need to think about a smart way to, in to introduce it to the problem. There are a lot of uh, medical implication and responsibility that are associated with it. And we are building a trusted brand um, but uh, from the technology point of view, we solve this problem. Toddlers, I'm using Nanit now on my toddlers, and we have other customers that move the camera without our permission. Um, there are opportunities there as well. And something very interesting that mainly because we build it from Cornell and research is in our DNA, um, but we are kind of the Raspberry Pi for the research community. Uh, that the data that we generate is, uh, can be used for early detection, early intervention. We have a student now that started a PhD on NANIT, which is pretty interesting. Uh, we're doing collaboration with uh, Cornell, uh, the Stipping Lab, University of Chicago with David Gozal, uh, Deborah Estrin for Cornell Weill, we're working with her as well. And um, Peretz Lavi, he's the president of the Technion. He helped us a lot along the process. He's the sleep expert, the sleep guru. Um, so we are deeply engaged in science, and it, I think it would be hard to find top scientists around science, uh, about uh, um, uh, child development that are not aware of NANIT or want to work with us uh, in a collaboration. This is a data that one of our beta testers allow us to share, uh, very interesting of how to use uh, insight uh, to create behavioral change. So we look at data pattern, quantify baby, uh, information and try to help parents to improve sleep. So our algorithm detected that Cameron is capable to put himself back to sleep. We also find out that his parents tend to visit him pretty often. So we told them, why don't you wait two to five minutes before you enter the room? Here, see this video, Cameron is capable. And this is how you drive behavioral change, bringing awareness and working with best uh, psychologists and experts to drive those changes. We have tens of tips. Uh, that we are about to launch this feature in the next uh, in the next quarter. The idea of looking at insight over time and driving change, this is the future of Nanit. And this is our goal as a company to deliver this insight that matter with science. We are deeply engaged with babies, we are about to conquer babies, but we build our infrastructure and algorithm in a scalable way that will allow us to tap into other verticals from birth to death, from sleep to mobility and vital signs, to create a gateway to human insight uh, by creating a sustainable model, model uh, with a product and a trusted brand, a product that people love and a trusted brand, you can actually um, uh, drive or, uh, or see patterns, uh, whether it is symptoms, diseases, at the individual and the global, uh, global level um, faster than existing uh, uh, methods today. I don't want to go to the list of advisors. This is, wasn't my attention, but I want to talk about one of them. One of them is uh, Avi Sadeh. I was fortunate to work with Avi, um, I think starting three and a half years ago. Uh, Peretz Lavi introduced me to Avi. Um, Avi invented the gold standard of how to measure sleep. It is an actigraph device when he was at Brown University, and I was fortunate to work with him in the last three years in developing our, our uh, sleep technology. Uh, I would like, uh, he, he, he passed away around uh, two weeks after we um, lunch, uh, uh, after we gave this first interview to the Wild. Um, it was not long after we came out of stealth mode. And I would like to read some of his words. Data that we had to collect in Sleep Lab at great expense, it produced on a huge scale here. Nanit's new algorithm can now reliably evaluate thousands of videos. Thanks to this data, an entirely new field of research to which we did not previously have access is now emerging, the regular sleep of thousands of children. 
Some diseases could possibly be detected and treated earlier, and not only in children, but in adults as well. Okay, so I think that I just end my 15 minutes, so this is time for Q&A, and if I'll miss it, we're also hiring a supply chain manager for our office in New York, so if you are willing to uh, apply, then this is the um, email address. into this? Is that it? Okay. I've done stranger things. Um, so I'm happy to say that I, my, my daughter is a beta tester. I pushed to get in to try it out because I love computer vision and it's been a great experience. Um, I have two questions. Question number one is how do you balance the false positives and the false negatives? For a new parent, while you don't want to miss any things worth noting, but the challenge has been as babies move around, there's a lot of false positives resulting in mothers waking up a lot. So that's an issue. And the other question is, is this applicable to, and have you started looking at the possibility of monitoring sleep for the other extreme of the spectrum, the aging, highly senior population? Sure, two questions. Um, so, um, the first one was about uh, the precision, the data. Uh, I'm a process control guy, okay? We have an algorithm team every week. They go over data and generate confusion metrics to see our precision week over week. A baby can wake up 10 times in an hour. It is called arousal. It doesn't consider it as an awake event. So our algorithm are required to differentiate between awake state and arousals. And um, when we develop our algorithm first, we made sure that the marking is aligned with how the uh, literature, our like visual classification is, does, is done. And second thing is uh, uh, being able to compare yourself to an octograph, which is like the state of the art device of how to measure sleep, um, and uh, to show that you outperform and have a reference when you do the development. So we're very aware of uh, uh, the precision and how to look at it over time. Elder care, yes, elder care is a big market. It is a much harder market even than the baby market. Uh, we are looking into this market um, uh, quite a few. Um, we design our camera in a way that uh, would be able to monitor also elders. Um, I cannot say too much about it, but it's the same technology can be used for adults and elders, and um, yes. Hello. <clears throat> um, you probably developed the tech, the algorithms, uh, First, right? So, my question is how was the challenge of uh, making this into an experience that the user actually wouldn't feel threatened by? You know, like we see that the, the camera itself is like a, a, you know, like an engaging and almost like safe design. And like that's my question, like the whole process of turning this amazing technology into a experience for the user that doesn't feel So I started with an off-the-shelf camera before we had our camera verified and certified to work in this setting. So, um, and we made a lot of testing and qualification to make sure that we meet the most restricted uh, standards. The main problem is to understand the problem like in, in, in algorithm in general. And I think that uh, the consumer is a key in this process. Uh, I think that when I landed in New York, the first thing is to buy Starbucks card and start to meet with parents and to learn about the experience. Um, there is a, a challenge here of how to uh, create this value proposition for parents while building a trusted brand. You want to measure sleep. 
So you need to be very aligned with how the science defines sleep. You want to recommend on uh, behavioral change. You need to be aligned of how psychologists and sleep trainers are, uh, should do it. And then on top of it, you perfect the user experience. And you do not make compromises on the science side. All right, on this note, uh, thank you very much. This was terrific. We appreciate the time. Thank you.